how has accessibility sort of evolved in the community and, and generally uh, just as a, as a concept in, in the past? What things have you guys been a part of and, and what uh, areas have you really seen some positive things? I can speak to that because I was, mm -hmm. I was here uh, living in Quinnell when I was when I was injured and like I said that earlier that was 30 years ago so when I was first injured in 1987 um, there was no such thing as curb cuts and so anywhere that I wanted to go in in town had I had to go with someone because I couldn't get up and down the sidewalks on my own exactly and accessible washrooms I mean that wasn't even a thought in someone's head at that time and I think really it was 1987 where we started to see um, people start to thinking about about accessibility issues and that was when Rick Hansen did his Man in Motion World Tour and I remember when he came through Quinnell in May of 1987 and, and I never of course dreamed that in November of 1987 I would end up in this situation so I've seen a lot of changes I did I moved away for a decade however I mean now you can go almost anywhere I don't think curbs are, are an issue anywhere in this town that, that, that I can go anywhere on my own and just to be able to do that um, is huge so that's probably I would say one of the biggest changes that I've noticed in, in, in the last 30 years and also just in the way our city thinks like you know it, it's taken some time but as Lynn mentioned earlier we've been able to sit on uh, in on design plans for like the new arena or the new housing project or this wonderful accessible downtown washroom that we have here whereas even probably eight or nine years ago I don't think that that um, you know would have happened so it's just great to have a really um, forward thinking and accessibility sort of minded um, city that that's willing to work with us um, you know on some of these projects and and making Quinnell as accessible as we can. So. We get phone calls quite regularly from different groups that are going to be making changes. I know the Communities for Veterans program, Terry and Paul Nichols, they're working on a really big accessibility project at their farm for people that come to their programming or even to their bed and breakfast, I suppose, too, because they also have Penny Britain bed and breakfast. And CHAPS, that's where we ride at CHAPS. I'm a volunteer at CHAPS as well as a client. I ride there. But Communities for Veterans, they're working on ways to have equipment for people to be able to get to all areas of their property, to be able to stay there as well. And their needs will encompass a huge variety of disabilities and abilities, right? Because we're dealing with veterans that may have all manner of different physical needs. Yeah. So that's one that I know of. One of the things that we're also working on with our Accessibility Advisory Committee is called a paramill. And that is a piece of equipment that we've gotten word will be uh, going into the, the weight room at the rec center. And what it basically is, I guess, in sort of layman's terms, is it's a treadmill for a wheelchair. So we can be stationary but still be getting that exercise. One of the things that um, a lot of people that especially in particular that are in wheelchairs you do a lot of forward pushing so your muscles across your, the front of your chest are very well developed however across the back um, tend to be not quite as developed so for me personally I'm looking forward to it because I can get on there and I can do a lot of backwards wheeling because for the for the same reaction that you do all of this um, the backwards motion um, is going to develop the opposite muscles yeah. and so that is one project that we're really looking forward to to being put in the gym and it, it's taken a little bit of sort of finagling as far as finding room for it in the gym because it is a larger piece of equipment but again, uh, Richard and Taryn at the rec center have been fantastic. And so, yeah, we're looking forward to that one. It'll be a good piece of equipment for able-bodied mm -hmm. people as well, because all they have to do is, you know, we're hoping we can get a wheelchair that other people can use that will stay at the gym. And e there's lots of able-bodied people who play wheelchair basketball. It's an amazing upper body workout. So for them to go and train like that will be, so it's an all round piece of equipment. It'll just be another education piece, letting yes. them know that it's there. Didn't you do an audit for Cottonwood House? Yes, I did. Yeah, that was uh, a number of You know, years they'll, ago. they'll say, we're going to be changing our washrooms, we're going to be doing this, would you come and have a look at it? Mm -hmm. Even the Fraser Health, not Fraser Health, um, where Glenn's office is. 
Crazy View Pharmacy, and he was making some changes in there, the pharmacist, and he had to change for where the washroom was going to be. He asked me to come and look at the space. So it speaks to our involvement in the community, one, that people know who we are so that they can ask us if we'll come or do we have information for them, and two, that we're willing. You know, We, we have a vested interest in our home. It's an important role that you play, right? It's, it's the focal point for uh, a, a group that, that needs to be involved, right? And, and it's, it's um, you know, I would say, an honorable position and, and, and role that, that you fulfill within the community. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's excellent and it's essential, right? And, you know, people need to involve the, the community that, that they are providing for, right? And so, to have you guys as, as that voice is, is fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's an honor speaking with you here. <laughs> I'm enjoying the time, so. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. I'm Michael Benoit, and this has been Upfront.